Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we'll be building a stepper motor driven airspeed indicator. For this build you'll need a stepper motor, an Arduino Mega, some M3 and M2 screws, a piece of clear acrylic, and these 3D printed parts. You'll also need to print off some decals. I printed mine on shipping labels so that they would be automatically sticky. Let's start with this piece. This is basically the core piece of our instrument panel. We can cut out this decal loosely to get us to a point where we can cut it more precisely. The best way I've found to align these is to hold it up to the light and align the holes. That's as close as I could reasonably get it, so I can pat it down with my hands. You can also laminate one side of the shipping label, uh, and that works well too, to keep it nice and clear. You can now use whatever you found in your recycling bin as a cutting board. Just be careful to cut it and not tear it. Clean up the edges now. And we can make the inside cuts now. If you don't want to deal with this whole rotating disc inside here, you can actually just leave this. Uh, you won't have to print this at all. You won't have to worry about this knob. Uh, you can just uh, probably stick it in there with a screw uh, instead. That works, but I would like to use the thing I spent like five hours designing. So we're going to cut this hole. So here we are and we can punch the holes with a screw. You can continue punching. This center hole works well with uh, from the back and any of these smaller ones, you might have to hold it up to the light again just to see where to poke. This countersinking screw does cover up the six and the 60, so if you'd like to, you can also put these screws through before you put the decal on. We have these two screws. There's only one more we need to deal with. We have this small M4 eight millimeter screw. I would probably actually prefer a six millimeter screw if you have one, uh, but that can go through this top hole right here. You can screw that in. That goes right here. And if you have an eight millimeter screw, you can screw it on flush. If you have a six millimeter screw, you can screw it in all the way. This is the stop for the airspeed needle. There's one in the real plane right here. And if you paint it black, it blends in better. My production budget, unfortunately, only allows sharpieing it. Kind of looks like a superhero with just laser eyes and a smile. If you've seen the Marble Machine series, it reminds me of Wilson. By the way, I made a mistake the other day, and this gear came off the CNC machine looking exactly like this. I have named him Wilson, and he has already started to talk to me. He's mainly complaining. Anyway, I got sidetracked by Wilson. Our next step is to install this piece right here. This piece also requires a decal, so we can install that right now. With this one, it's best to align this corner to the center and then these outside numbers to the outside. Here's some external footage. Now you can just cut it in a circle. Careful with your hands at the inner circle. Join Captain Bob's inner circle. Speaking of inner circle, check out the Discord in the description below. It's a community of home cockpit enthusiasts. Uh, share your build pictures there and whatnot. It'll be a great time. Oh! This 100 has left the chat. All right. Now, this is a, has a few frays, so you can kind of Try to clean it up the best you can, but I'd say this looks overall pretty good. Uh, we're about ready to lock this all up. You have these numbers all working together right here, and you twist this knob, and it changes them. To twist the knob, you need your gear um, and your knob. So poke the gear through here. Might need a little persuasion. It's more than persuasion. Why is it hollow? Probably best print this piece with about 100% infill uh, just to keep it. So this all goes together. The knob cap will go on later and it should, and it'll fit tighter than this obviously. But now you can seal up the motor basically. Uh, just 
install the stepper motor right here. Its face will face down like so. And then you'll just have to screw in uh, these screws to the motor. So peeking out right here, we have a little needle. And we'll just attach that needle to this needle right here uh, and super glue it. This part, you have to be super, super, super glue careful because if you super glue the motor together, it won't turn. That's, motors kind of don't like being super glued together. Another thing is that you have to be careful that the motor is in its correct position before you glue it together. If it's at its farthest extent over here and it can't go any more left, then you're kind of super screwed. To figure that out, get some tweezers and see where its stop is. It's at its stop right now. Then we can add super glue to this and add it to here. We have it all situated except for this needle. This needle I printed in white, but the print bed for whatever reason made it a little bit gray. I'm going to touch this up with some white paint marker. Okay. If you're a 172 geek like myself, you'll know that the bottom of these is actually black right here. It makes kind of a V uh, just right above the point of rotation. So I can color these in with a Sharpie right here. If you prefer, you can also apply a paper decal over this, and that might get you a better surface finish. You can also play around with different Z offsets to see if different Z offsets get rid of elephant foot, and then also don't make it too high where the layers don't really stick together very well. Fun fact, uh, super in the name actually just means be super careful with it. I just went upstairs. Now you want me to go up again to get my tweezers? This is probably the most dangerous thing I've done in my life. We're going to put super glue in without using the little nozzle. Okay. Now the hope is we didn't get it on our hands. We didn't get it <laughs> in the gear right here that moves. And uh, most importantly, we didn't get it in the motor. While we're waiting for this to dry, let's work on the bezel. 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 The bezel consists of three parts. The main bezel, the glass, and the ring. This is similar to the construction of the actual bezel of like a tachometer. I took one apart and took all the dimensions from this, so it's pretty darn accurate. This glass is acrylic, and you can just peel off this and then peel off the other side as well. Now, this is the first time I've seen it clear like this. So it's an exciting moment for all of us. Ooh, so clear. This glass is actually from the Altimeter Motives glass set. I put a little notch in right here to account for this hole right here. That just lets it go through and not interfere with the needle. So make sure to add a notch uh, over there. If you want the notch already in it, I'm thinking of maybe investing in a, a panel of acrylic and getting my own. But I really like the glass. It's, uh, I think it really adds to it and it's not too much more expensive. Pizza is not a good food to be eating right before installing the glass. So uh, we have the glass, make sure you can see a little dot, maybe right there, uh, right here where <laughs> the center actually hit the glass. So try to make sure that the center won't hit the glass here uh, and put these two together. For the first time ever, uh, I, I'm seeing it uh, all together and it is looking quite awesome. We're hoping that this all worked out and that it's dried to the needle. I'm not sure if it actually penetrated or not when I put it in, so uh, we will see when we open MobiFlight. This is great to hold right here, but if you don't want to hold it uh, your whole life, then we have some screw holes. Make sure to, okay, make sure to first align this hole right here. And then this is the spacing of the actual aircraft just for looks, but you only have to screw in like two. 
So I got these two screwed in and now I really like how it looks. Just the way the like, the, the like light catches the glass. Oh, it's putting shivers down my spine. For construction, we need to get this gear to work. We need to get the wiring and we also need something that'll make it look just super fun and quirky. Then put your gear through. And now that your gear is through, you can put on the knob. Now there's a little set screw. If you have a small M2 screw, you can put it through. I don't, my smallest is uh, eight millimeter. So we're going to super glue it. Or in my case, I'll actually hot glue it just because I want it to be removable in case I ever do maintenance inside the instrument, which is likely because I'm not sure if this needle glued properly or not. So I'll just put a tiny little dab hot glue just to keep it on. I say as I put a lot of hot glue on it. And then just kind of, uh, that's probably too much. Oh, quick, 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 quick. <laughs> and then just kind of put it on. Uh, wait for it to dry before wiggling it or anything. And now you can see it should work out, at least temporarily. I'm still just waiting for these small screws. And already you can see that it adjusts the position right here. So we can like line it up and everything. So now the true airspeed tape is working together. So now if you wanted to fly while it's freezing at 8,000 feet, you could take this zero and align it with the eight right here and then then when you'd be flying 100, you'd actually be flying about 110 true. So that's really cool how it works. Uh, it's really fun to get to kind of know that much more about aviation. Now let's wire it and add the fun thing. I'm gonna show you directly wiring these pins to the Arduino, but there's also a method you can use with easy drivers. So if that floats your boat, you can go look in the description for the GitHub document. So I have four eight inch pieces of wire I'm stripping both sides to about four millimeters. I can tin the wire right here, tin the connector on the motor, and then solder them together. If you're not into soldering, you technically can use some jumper cables, but I really prefer soldering, especially for this. Uh, because it's a lot tighter and it lasts longer too. There's one more thing. We have a DuPont connector kit here. If you've never used one of these, make sure to look at a few YouTube videos I'll have in the description below on how to use these. You basically pop the terminal in, tighten it down, put the wire through, make sure it covers the right amount, and crimp it down. Now we have all four of these wires and we can attach it to the Arduino. This is the moment of truth to see if uh, our needle worked out. Ah, it works like a charm. That is so satisfying. This is the first ever time I've seen my airspeed indicator move, so. Now we have this complete. You can add more screws right here but functionally, it's perfect. My favorite part of this design is the outer casing. It just snaps on. There's a slot on the bottom so that you can access the wires and you're all good to go. I really like that this is actually to the real aircraft size. It just makes it that more realistic. <laughs> although you will never see it from the front of the plane. If you'd like to support builds like this in the future, consider supporting on Patreon. That helps cover some of the development costs and helps keep the plans free. Also, if you want all of the plans to my entire simulator back here, you can visit the GitHub down below and just download all the files at once. Now we've built this awesome airspeed indicator for the Cessna 172. If you're interested in other builds, check out my other videos 
and also check out my website, CaptainBobSim.com. I'm selling these as kits and assembled, so if you'd like to purchase one, go visit the link in the description below. Thank you, as always, to the supporters of the Captain Bob YouTube channel, including Altimeter Motives, Aviv, Bromi, Chris Patey, David Housley, John Carr, Mr. Klotz, Propwash Sim, and Similar. I hope you have an absolutely fantabulous rest of your day, and have a good one.